I'm Marty Stauffer. Ever since returning to Noah's Ark with an olive branch, the dove has been considered a universal sign of good news and peace. For some, it holds a place of reverence. For others, its billing and cooing signifies true love. Although larger species, like the band-tail, are called pigeons, they're members of the same family as doves, like this morning dove. North America is home to six native wild species and three escaped domestic species of pigeons and doves. In meeting this gentle family, we'll have to deal with the irony that the most hunted of all birds are the birds of peace. As greening meadows advertise the onset of spring, the morning doves return to our northern states to mate and raise their young. Everywhere, the sights and sounds of courtship fill the air. One of the most poignant rituals is performed by the morning dove. Billing, cooing, and mutual preening are all part of a ceremony which establishes and strengthens their lifelong bond. Despite his soulful serenade, this young male has a lot to learn about the art of winning a mate. Once the doves pair up, the male goes to work collecting grass, roots, and twigs. With these materials, the female will build a simple, loosely woven nest. Morning doves breed up to five times a year. Their multiple broods are a key to the success of their kind, especially since mortality for the young can exceed 70%. Widespread, as well as prolific, they are one of the few birds which nest in all 48 states.
The doves continue cooing to one another during nest building, a behavior that further strengthens the pair bond. The name mourning dove refers to their soft, mournful song. Another distinctive sound made by doves is the whistling of their wings in flight. Two healthy, though rather awkward looking young, are the product of their labors. The responsibilities of parenthood are shared equally by male and female. Two weeks after hatching, the fledglings are almost ready to leave the nest. Stationed nearby, the female awaits the male's return and then leaves. The male offers the brood a meal of regurgitated seeds. When newly hatched, the squabs were fed pigeon's milk, a curd-like substance shed from the lining of the adult's crop. Both sexes produce this crop milk, a unique ability within the animal kingdom. In suburban areas throughout our southern states, morning doves can be seen feeding alongside their smaller cousin, the ground dove. At a distance, ground doves may look like miniature morning doves, But up close, the scaled appearance of the ground dove's head and breast feathers is distinctive. There are other differences as well. The morning dove has a small head, short neck, and a slender black bill. The ground dove's profile is much more compact, and its bill is orange tipped with black. This sparrow-sized bird is the smallest of North American doves. Most doves and pigeons are seed eaters. They also peck at sand and gravel. This grit is swallowed into their gizzard to aid in grinding the seeds for digestion. The Florida Keys are home to both the morning dove and ground doves as well as other less common members of the dove family. Here, the tropical vegetation and warm climate attract hordes of humans. Wildlife is also attracted to these Gulf Stream islands. white-crowned pigeon nests in the Keys and nowhere else in the United States. Unlike their seed-eating cousins, these handsome pigeons eat mainly fruit. White-crowned pigeons depend on the small fruits of tropical trees, such as fig and poison wood. Biologists fear that this specialized diet may cause the bird's demise in the Florida Keys. In clearing the land for development, much of the native vegetation is replaced with ornamental plants. As the native fruit trees disappear, so will the pigeons.
For now, the white-crowned pigeons still find a refuge in the outlying mangrove islands where they nest and roost. These islands are generally too low and wet to support fruit trees, so each day the island-hopping pigeons commute as much as 20 miles to the mainland to feed. For the winter, most of the pigeons migrate to distant islands in the West Indies. Some, however, remain in the Keys adapting as best they can in the face of a rapidly changing landscape. The highly adaptable Eurasian collared dove is a non-native resident of the Keys. In the past 100 years, this dove has spread from India to Europe to Africa and now to North America. Its worldwide range expansion is equaled only by that of the cattle egret. Despite its name, the Key West quail dove is more common in the West Indies. Only occasionally does it stray into the lower keys. The vast majority of pigeons and doves around the world inhabit tropical forests. Consequently, the southern portions of Texas and Florida support a greater diversity of species than the more temperate states. Along the lower Rio Grande in Texas, several Mexican species are found. The little Inca dove is as much at home at a backyard feeder or golf course as it is in mesquite thickets. In fact, this sociable dove seems to prefer man-made environments. To the early settlers, crossing the desert southwest in search of water, the Inca dove's melancholy song sounded like the words, no hope. The beautiful white-winged dove is another South American species which migrates to our southwestern states every spring. More gregarious than the morning dove, white-winged doves feed and nest in enormous flocks. The seeds of sorghum and sunflowers are relished by these doves. Commercial farmers consider them a pest for raiding crop fields, but dove hunters, in hopes of attracting more birds, plant sunflower fields specifically for the hunting season. For those interested in observing doves and pigeons, Santa Ana National Wildlife Refuge in Texas offers the best opportunities. More native species can be found here than anywhere else. Water is an essential element for dove habitat. They must drink at least once a day to soften the seeds they ingest. Their ability to drink without lifting their heads to swallow is very rare among birds. Morning doves are almost as common at Santa Ana as white-winged doves. In the background, a white-tipped dove. Its white breast and belly distinguish it from the other doves. This species is the only solitary dove in North America.
Even less common at Santa Ana is the red-billed pigeon, which rarely makes an appearance north of the Mexican border. The band-tailed pigeon is found in the rugged foothills and mountains of the Rockies and the Pacific coast. These birds have staged a dramatic comeback since the early 1900s when their population plummeted from overhunting. Huge flocks were slaughtered by hunters who sold their meat commercially. Their population has since recovered. However, a decrease in the West Coast population is causing renewed concern. The bantail is the largest pigeon in North America, a virtual giant compared to the smallest of birds, the hummingbird. The bantail can easily be distinguished from its cousin, the morning dove. Besides the difference in size, there's also an obvious difference in the shape of their tails. The morning dove has a long pointed tail, while that of the band-tailed pigeon is square. bobcat prowls nearby. On the ground, pigeons are much more vulnerable to predators and are therefore extremely cautious. Their safety lies not so much in numbers, but in rapid flight. With colorful neck feathers and a strong, soothing voice, a male tries to impress his mate. A pair usually raises only one offspring per year. Their reproductive rate is the lowest of all our doves and pigeons. By contrast, the extinct passenger pigeon was one of our most prolific birds. Experts say it was the most numerous bird species ever to have existed on Earth. Their legendary flocks, some nine billion strong, accounted for at least a quarter of the total bird population in America. Incredibly, by the early 1900s, there was only one of these colorful pigeons left, a female named Martha. A sole survivor 
of ruthless overhunting and the felling of eastern forests. The passenger pigeon quickly perished with the onslaught of civilization. But the homing pigeon's coexistence with humans dates back 5,000 years when they were first raised for food. Only the jungle fowl, the ancestor of today's chicken, has a longer history of domestication. The amazing homing instinct of these pigeons and their flight speeds of up to 70 miles per hour led to the popular sport of pigeon racing. Champion racers can earn up to half a million dollars from one race alone. Numbered bands called countermarks are used to record the bird's flight time and distance. The racers are then crated and taken to a release site many miles away. Although they are the most intensively studied of all birds, their navigational skills are still not completely understood. Yet their ability to find their way home is so reliable, hospitals now use homing pigeons to transport blood samples to laboratories for quick analysis. These pigeons are also credited with saving thousands of lives during both world wars. Messenger bands, such as this one, were used to send information to army outposts, alerting soldiers of the enemy's whereabouts. Once released, the birds circle to get their bearings, then fly straight home. In cities throughout the world, domesticated pigeons have escaped and found a suitable niche among man-made buildings. Their wild ancestor, the European rock dove nested in caves and on sea cliffs. Urban environments provide similar types of nesting sites. With plenty of human handouts and a lack of natural predators, these city pigeons reproduce explosively. The nestlings engage in mock fencing contests. This ritualized behavior is used for both courtship and aggression displays. The sooner they master these skills, the better equipped they will be to compete for mates and nest sites. Regardless of efforts to control their numbers, city pigeons are with us to stay. Far from the bustling cities, the peaceful countryside belongs to the morning dove. Each autumn, the morning dove provides hunters with a bountiful harvest. In 36 states, 3 million hunters will bag approximately 45 million morning doves. More doves are shot annually than all other game birds combined. Their speed on the wing makes them an elusive target, 
It often takes a dozen or more shots to kill one bird. Sportsmen spend more than $100 million during dove hunting season. And so dove meat, as delicious as it is, costs about $12 a pound. In spite of the great number taken, dove populations remain stable in most areas. In a few areas of the West where they are declining, a change in agricultural practices and not hunting are to blame. <laughs> yeah. As grain fields fade to brown, the doves will seek greener pastures in the southern U.S. and in Mexico. With continued wise management, the morning dove will remain a valuable and renewable resource. Silhouetted against the setting sun, a flock pauses for a rest before beginning their long journey south. The extinction of the passenger pigeon should remind us for all time that an animal's temporary abundance does not guarantee its survival. Today, fortunately, hunting laws are far more restrictive than they were a century ago. By improving game management and preserving critical habitat, we can correct the mistakes of the past and create a promising future for the inspiring birds of peace. I'm Marty Stauffer. Until next time, enjoy our wild America. Thank <laughs> you.